welcome, welcome. Sorry, it's warm in here. Up next, we have Little Six, so please welcome Little Six so we can do some questions. My check, my check. Yep, you know, you know. It's Lil Six, aka the Prince of Darkness. Yes. Sacramento, California, born and raised. Oh yeah. Yes sir, yes sir. Uh, I went to Burbank and then Florence. I went to the Gotcha. It's all out. Alright, so how are you today? I'm doing good. Great to be here. Always happy and appreciated to do this event. Awesome, awesome. So let's start out basic. What was your draw into music uh, besides um, initially, just loving hip hop, loving good music, um, being able to, to learn. I feel like back in the 90s, um, we learned knowledge, we learned stories, um, you know, escapism almost. And then, um, so I grew up as a fan of hip hop and music first. And then uh, the music changed. Music, it just got a little bit different, a little bit of watered down. And I felt like the sacramental sickness, especially, um, was being aged out, being forgotten, um, almost like a lost art form. So I took it upon myself to bring it back, bring back that spooky shit, that Sacramento shit, and just represent the city the way I know how. So this leads right into my next question. Um, can you explain to those that don't understand what or or rap is and, and give them a better explanation on that? Yeah, for sure. Um, horror horror is basically like horror movies and music form. That's the best way I can explain it. And like a lot of horror horror artists uh, do music for like shock value and uh, you know just to be spooky fantasy stuff like that stuff you can't do in real life you know so it's an, it's an escape it's therapy but it's also glory um, and the Sacramento stuff I just add that on with it that's why we call the Sacramento sickness like a sub genre of horror horror but really it's just love for horror the love for zombies the love for brains awesome uh, what inspired you to go more down the route of horror horror than um, just because it's going against the norm, I like to be different. I don't like to sound like everybody else on the radio. I feel like um, the more horror, I can genuinely express myself with no limits and no barriers. I know people these days be getting canceled. But I don't give a fuck. I'm gonna say it how I wanna say it, and I'm gonna do it how I wanna do it. But my heart is pure about it, and I love it as a genre, and I love it as a form of self-expression. Being that you're a musician, what other genres do you regularly listen to that you wouldn't expect that you listen to? Um, I listen to, believe it or not, a lot of Christian music. Um, I like to explore all types of music. A couple country artists. Um, I know he's probably new, he probably doesn't count as a country artist, but I love Jelly Roll, you know, but he was hip-hop and hip-hop. I feel like he was more for at first, too. So, um, just all music, R&B, soul, Sade. Um, I'm a, I'm a 90s and 2000s hip hop and R&B guy overall, so I listen to regular hip hop as well, but new mainstream, I'm not really into. So because you're not really into new mainstream, have you, do you ever have the goal of cracking into mainstream, or do you want to kind of stay where you're at? Um, I'm open for the idea, but I don't want to force it. I don't want to push it, and I want it to be genuine and authentic no matter what I'm doing. So if I work with another future artist, and their sound is more mainstream, I can adjust. But if I make a full project, I don't think it's gonna be mainstream. But I do enjoy um, working with different type of artists. So I got songs with like rock artists. I got songs um, on my Resurrection EP with, um, I wanna say a folktale singer, you know what I'm saying, plays guitar. So I'm not boxed in, but I don't want my sound to be soft or water down. I want it to be raw and um, have some important so. Um, what are three artists that you would love to work with and why? Uh, Dead or Alive. Either or. Okay. Oh. Um, first off, I was a real big DMX fan because I felt like he was mainstream, but he was also dark. You know, he, was, he wasn't really horror for it, but he was on that photo line. Um, so DMX, R.P. DMX. Um, there's this new artist named Russell. He's not horror for at all. He's more like spoken word. Soil poetry slash high feet hip hop. He's out of the Bay, Vallejo, California. He's a really good performer. Um, 
and it uh, educates a lot. And it's dangerous, he tells the musicians how to get paid, how to, uh, how to get fan engagement, how to improve, uh, how to make sure your business is right, how to value yourself as an artist. So I respect his mind, I respect his hustle, and I also like his music. So DMX, the wrestler, and the third, um, uh, that's tough. I mostly listen to myself. <laughs> but uh, let's see, let's see. Four or four wives. Um, hey, it doesn't have to Tech be Nine. One. Tech Nine. I got a few, if I can name a few and not just three. Tech Nine, um, Twisted Insane, uh, Twister from Chicago. And uh, that's about it for now. I don't want to make a list of them. I think that uh, a collaboration with Tech would be amazing. Yeah, for sure. He's such a great guy. So that goes into my next question. Are there any backpacks or cyphers that you want to be a part of that you haven't had a chance to be a part of yet? Uh, I try to apply myself. So most of anything that I want to do, I have done when it comes to music stuff like that. But Shino Media has a, a, a dope little cypher session. I want to hop on that. But um, even though it's like all the people rap the same, um, you know, so I can never have a lot of gang politics. So, that doesn't really affect me, but I feel like they're not being as creative as they can be. And I'm already boxing with the whole core stuff on my so I really don't try to, uh, you know, I'm trying to do my own thing. I try to build my own platforms. I try to collaborate with somebody and then build something. I don't really want to hop on anybody else's train and be considered uh, one of them or doing what they're doing. That's literally the opposite of my beliefs. I like to be my own path and, uh, you know, follow my own direction. So there's no disrespect to nobody. I watch everything, I listen to everything, I appreciate everything in the culture, but I also know what to stay away from. Just want to stay genuine true to yourself, yeah. where your heart lies. But if it was like a, a cypher full of Tech Nine type of artist, I would want to join that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If it was more, if it was like all horror for artists, I would want to join that. But mostly everybody's talking about um, killing somebody that lived down the street or their problems with another person or person. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's like right. personal beef and drama. I'm not into drama. I'm into art. I'm into creating. I'm into manifesting. Um, so besides music, I know that for a while there you were streaming video games online yeah, yeah. with your friends. And you were playing Super Street Fighter, uh, the arcade edition. Uh, what are your go-to characters? Um, mostly uh, the Shoto characters, Fireballs and Uppercuts, Ken and Yu, Sakura. Play a little bit of Cammy. Um, but before I started doing music seriously, um, video games was another escape, and it was another thing that uh, that kept me out of trouble, that kept me away from the games of violence, that kept me away from uh, you know hard drug use, just the problems that come along with this city. I don't want to make Sacramento seem bad, but we all know homelessness, the prostitution, the drug use. We all see it. It's a part of life. Um, it kept me away a little bit somewhere. I was competing. I was traveling. I was learning, meeting different type of people. Prepare me for situations like this. I'm super shy, super nervous. Um, but performing playing video games in front of people and knowing thousands of people are watching the stream, that kind of built up my character, built up my heart, and I got used to the lights. And I just enjoyed the game, I enjoyed the, the competitiveness, um, and it was a, another form of expression. I got a Ken tattoo on my back. I ain't gonna take my shirt off. Man. You know, I'm dedicated. I have this Ken tattoo on my back. It's been my favorite character since I was a little kid, since I was a child. Nice. What other games do you play? Um, I used to play a lot on a fantasy RPG games. Those taught me how to read as a child. You know, you know I played, spent a lot of time playing video games. Stay out the way. Stay out of trouble. I remember, I'm playing video games. There's not too much I can get into that's negative. Um, but Crash Bandicoot, um, Mario. You know, all the games. You know, back in the day, the games were good. Um, I was really heavy into Call of Duty, you know, Call of Duty 4. Um, what else? Harvest Moon, Animal Crossing, my kids play video games, so it's like a whole other generation. They take all my games now, I'll buy it for them. Um, Dragon Ball. Fortnite with the kids? See, I don't do Fortnite. I'm, I feel like that's a, I feel like that's a child's game. I guess he was mouth open back there too. I feel like the skill level is high nowadays because people got really good at it, but I can't. I don't want to get beat up by them kids. I let my son play. My son's really good though, so he, he holds it down for anything that I don't play. That's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. And the voices, they little squeaky voices, they talk so much shit on there. I don't want to yell at no kids all day. It's like, it's like college week now. College yeah, week yeah. back in the day was like everybody was just rapping, and now you play Call of Duty and you have like the little 11 year old kids on there talking smack. Yeah, well, you're like, you know, you know, I mute them now. I just mute everybody and I just, I kill them the comments. Um, so 
you have family in, in the racket, um, did you always want to build your own career on your own, or have you ever thought about you know trying to jump on their coattails a little bit? Um, actually, it was the opposite. I've been around rappers and music and singers my whole life, so I was kind of used to it, numb to it. Um, it's almost stereotypical when it comes to being a black male who either play sports or, or rap. So I was kind of straying away from it. That's why I did the gaming thing. That's why I was doing the professional gaming thing. But I just love music, and um, it's a skill that's inside of me, almost genetically. And um, I couldn't ignore it anymore. I want to use my voice, I want to tell my story, I want to inspire others. Um, so, I stopped fighting. And I just got into it, full-fledged. And now, I wish I would have started to it, and I wish I would have took it more serious when I had the opportunity. Like in high school, like we did music, dropped a CD, um, people loved it. But to me, it was just for fun, it was just for sport, it was just, you know, to create. But if I would have stuck with it back then, I felt like I'd be a little bit further than I am right now, but, you know, it's all good. Better late than never. So you have had some struggles in your life, yeah. and that has led you down the road to music and trying to be independent, stand on your own, and do your own thing, and sure. not necessarily be tied down. Um, what was that like overcoming those situations, uh, especially with family dynamics yeah, and yeah. all of that? Um, you know, it just thick skin, built me up, made me tough. Um, you know, I had a lot of trauma in my life because of it. Um, just a lot of ways to cope that were negative that I was doing. Um, and I have an obsessive personality just in general. So anything that I like, I go crazy for it. So I try to replace anything negative with the positive and go crazy for that. Put it into my life, put it into my kids, put it into my music, put it into the game, put it into my craft. That way I can stay busy and obsessed over those type of things versus um, just negative things like too much smoking, too much drinking, um, gambling. That was my big price, you know, when I was young, I was coming up, I was hustling, we were shooting dice, you know, we were, we were selling, I don't want to say selling drugs, but motherfucker, we were selling drugs. We were hustling. <laughs> so, um, yeah, and, and I wasn't doing it for the reason for surviving. You know, my mother kept a roof over my head. We had food, but I like I like nice things, and I was the oldest. And I didn't want to take away from my mother's plate to provide for my younger siblings. So I went out and you know found the means of my own. And uh, those are some of the things that led me down uh, a dark path later in life. Because back then, it was, you know, it wasn't too bad. I didn't have too much money to make or lose really back then. You know, just sneak your clothes, to take care of yourself, to look nice, to be fresh. You know, those are not, um, you know, necessities for everybody. That's a luxury, not everybody has that. So, peer pressure from school. You know, when you go to school, you don't want to be the poor kid. You don't want to be the, uh, the guy with the ripped up sneakers. We like Nikes, we like Jordan, we like nice things. So, initially, that's one of the reasons I got into it. But I wish I would have just, uh, you know, started for a different reason to build a business, to, to build a platform, to pass something down. You know, all the stuff that I know now, I wish I knew back then. So I had to learn, unlearn that stuff and fight against it on the gambling addiction. And you know California has a shitload of casinos. If you want to get lost in a casino, you can't use it. But once you start to, down that path, this is not, you know, it's dark. You know, a lot of people don't like to talk about it. Um, but the bad thing about it, I was good at it. So I was winning it. And then that's what got me hooked. I was winning. I got used to the cash. I had a nine to five job as well. But it was a pastime for me um, that just, I lost control of it. Um, I lost my mind. I had to gather myself, I had to reset, I had to prove myself to my family again, I had to prove myself trustworthy again, I had to rebuild my character, you know, I had to find my way. And that's also what the music has done for me, tell my story, um, hopefully some other people can avoid those type of things based off of my experiences and just try to help, just try to get back. Um, so, because you've overcome the struggles and you've gone through what you've gone through and had the life lessons that you've had, what would you tell the younger generation that's struggling with some of those things now? Like, maybe not the same struggles, but they're struggling and they're trying to not go down those paths. What kind of advice would you give them? Uh, I'll tell them that none of that, none of the shit that you think is cool while you're young matters. 10, 15 years later, those shoes ain't gonna make a difference. Or you'll have the shoes from a job, from something um, positive. Don't cave into peer pressure. A lot of people try to get you to fight, try to get you to game bang. Um, a lot of people in South Carolina are negative. They'll make fun of you for trying to be smart. They'll make fun of you for trying to learn. They'll for trying to, you know, just do something to improve yourself. So just be yourself. 
know the bullshit, do what you want to do, and you know, think for yourself as your own man or woman. Different merch options on there. 
but I just want to bring something dope to the table and I'm going to try to stay busy with something new in the chamber. So Cross Convention is coming, all platforms, exclusively early access to even that biz. It seems to kind of those posters available showing the cover. That's the same one of artists on there as features. I try to show love and create opportunity for others the same way I wish um, others could do for me. Uh, what is, so far, out of the many times that you have come to Sinister, what has been your favorite experience so far? That's tough. I like everything. I like soaking in the people. I like seeing the line when you first get there with the long ass line, even though they're not all over for me. But it's just beautiful to see people coming together. There's never no pride. There's people not bitching. It's hot. They're patient. I respect that. Um, just meeting uh, Rachel True. Uh, I've seen her uh, have faith and, you know, a couple of things that crap. Yeah. Um, you just be associated with the people I grew up watching. You know, I think that's very dope. Um, my son loves to come here. As soon as he comes here, he's comfortable. He's running to the back to the little VIP room to get snacks. Um, just to share this with my people, I got my boy Tim, uh, my photographer back there, man. It's just, just the whole thing in general. I appreciate you guys. Uh, I appreciate the work you guys do here and like, the platform you guys build and the like, tradition. This, this shit it feels dope every year. It gets bigger, it gets better. And uh, I'm just grateful to be a part of it. That's awesome. And it's in Sacramento. You're from yeah, Tennessee. you know, you can't go wrong. That's town shit. I'm, I'm very Sacramento prideful, so anything Sacramento related, I love it by default. So if you didn't get into gaming and you didn't get into music, where do you think you would be and what do you think you'd be doing? Uh, to be honest, I'd probably be there in jail. But if I got to choose, you know, like something else positive, um, shit, I don't know. Like, those are the things that kept me out of the way. Those are the things that, that uh, kept me out of trouble. But I did used to want to play sports, like football, but I'm skinny, I'm little, you know, I didn't work out too well. Um, I was really heavy into like, uh, the X Games, uh, BMX, skateboarding, all that type of stuff. I could never do it, but I was always a fan of it. So just being around some type of culture, or some type of extreme sports, some type of extreme something from an extreme person. Um, but that's pretty much it, though. But you know, there's so much negative shit that if I felt like if I wasn't doing gaming or I wasn't doing the music, I'd be somewhere negative. And that's just me being honest. Have you thought about trying to cross your music over into video games? The horror video games to get your yeah, music yeah. in there? Even in Street Fighter, I was trying to get a song in Street Fighter. I was talking to one of the Capcom developers, but it didn't work out. But I'm still pushing. Uh, I got some resources in my, in my bag now with some people that, uh, that have experience with getting music and, and video games and stuff like that. So I try not to force it. I try to learn and uh, earn my way in. But I'm definitely trying to get some music in the sport games, the horror games, like Resident Evil, um, anything spooky. But that's pretty much it. So, hell yeah, I'm trying to get in there. I'm trying to get my foot in the door. What's your favorite venue in Sacramento to perform in? Um, I wish it was this. I wish y'all would let me perform here. There's a good crowd. There's no music here. Um, um, Harlow's. Harlow's is pretty dope. They got a nice stage. They got a good sound system. Nice little bar. Smoking area to where you can walk outside and get a breath of fresh air downtown. Um, but I, you know, I performed at a lot of spots. I don't know, Catholic, Romeo, all those. Um, anywhere that, are, you know, permit and allows the music, that's another barrier we have to break through because there's a lot of negative um, things that come with rap music and the violence and just the, the realistic shit of the city. So anywhere that, that allows me to do music, I appreciate the talent that doesn't um, stereotype me. I like to bring my value there, rock out, whether it's 10 people or 100 people or more. You are related to Brother Lynch Hunt. Yes, yes. And he has quite the following. And sure. he um, is definitely a unique person and a unique personality all on its own. Um, is there a time or a place where you would love to do a big performance with him on a bigger stage? Or have you guys collaborated and done yeah, a few things? Um, I have a couple songs with him. Um, my team gathered them, though, so sometimes the song will be partly made already. And, uh, so I have a couple features with him like that. He's my uncle. Um, I grew up around him. Uh, he's part of the reason why I do the horrorcore style. Um, he's my favorite rapper, you know what I'm saying? So I definitely would love to do more with him. But he extends his hand when he can. He went on tour a couple times. Uh, Brother Lynch Hung and X Rated. Um, they invited me out. I opened up for him. I performed on the big stage in front of uh, 
find from the people. So it was beautiful. And I try not to bug them too much for favors because I, I know the story. I know I know he's getting you. I know how people try to reach out to you and use people for their names and shit like that. So I try not to be a bugaboo too much. But uh, I'm just grateful you're still dropping music. He's my favorite artist and he's one of the people I listen to daily just to get in that zone and you know, just uh, escape life sometimes. And it's always an experience when you're with him. Yeah, for sure. You're gonna see it. You're gonna see it. I fall asleep to that shit. It it's soothing to me. That's the music I grew up on. Yeah. But they're having fun in the hospital. Yeah. 
Yeah. You know, there's a difference. The rap show, you know, that's a part. Of, that's a part of Sacramento culture as well. So it sucks, but it's a part of the sickness, and that's why we bring it. Do we have any other questions in the audience? Most of the time it's the beat. I have concepts and ideas in my head. A lot of my music comes from like, mental um, experiences, mental fantasies, stuff like that. Um, just personal experience. But when I hear a beat, usually like a memory will pop up. And then I'll write based off that memory. Whether it's uh, something I've seen, something I've done, um, something I've been through. But um, a lot of the times the songs write themselves. If I hear a good beat, if I get chills, you know, if like when you watch Get Scared, you get chills. My, my songs will write themselves and my subconscious will come out. And uh, a lot of times I surprise myself. Sometimes it's dark, sometimes it's crazy. But I always tell myself to write what you feel, make sure it's pure, make sure it's dope still. But at the same time, uh, just be authentic. So when I get some dope beats, I sit down, I zone out. I drink a lot of water, maybe smoke some weed. I don't smoke as much now, but you know, we smoke some weed, zone out, listen to some other guy trying to watch a scary movie, watch First 48, watch some friends and foul, shit like that. You know what I'm saying? Get in my zone, get dark, get green. And then when I do my shit, I have that Sacramento sickness flair to it. And it just comes out dope, and I hope that people enjoy it. Thank you for having the question, I appreciate it. Any other questions, you guys? Yeah, go ahead, sweetheart. Yes, for sure. Business-wise, it was a little bit hard to hear you, but I heard you. Um, Business-wise, um, you just gotta look at the history and culture of music, not even just Sacramento. If you look at TLC, if you look at Michael Jackson, if you look at just hip hop, and, you know, just music in general, people didn't know the business. You need to own your music. Um, if you grab the beats from YouTube, you have a popular song, and it blows up, they're gonna take their money back. So just owning things. Um, doing things the right way the first time, recording your performances to be on my ass that a lot of artists that perform or even do other mics. If you don't get paid, you can go on your uh, your registration to be my report that you perform and get some money um, towards your royalties and stuff like that. And there's a whole bunch of people that do 20, 30 shows and they go home with nothing. And they can at least be building a resume and getting their royalties. So just doing the homework is it's about the homework. A lot of artists like to create, but they don't like to study. But you have to study so people don't take advantage of you, especially you being a lady. Um, you know, there's there's a whole bunch of shit in this game you gotta worry about. Creepy people, creepy photographers, creepy producers, people that want something out of you that you don't want to give up, you just want to create big music. The best way to stop all the bullshit is to be knowledgeable and they'll feel that you're knowledgeable and they won't even try you in that direction. They won't even try to push in that direction because they know you're not with the bullshit and they'll take you more serious as the artist as well. But if you come in naive, you come in green, somebody's gonna push that button. Somebody's gonna take advantage. Thank you. Any other questions? All right. All right. Well, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate you guys. Make sure that you stop by his table in the main hall, uh, not the vendor hall, but the main hall in the front. Um, check him out, see his projects, and then stop by and talk with him. Thank you, Thank you guys. I really do appreciate it. This is Little Six, aka the motherfucking Prince of Darkness, Sacramento, California, born and raised.